Please be seated. It is always a pleasure to meet the men and women of God and the family of the Christ and the people who originated with God Himself. Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim, in the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, the Sustainer of the entire creation of the universe, the creator of all of us who make up the present family of humanity on our planet and all of the planets of our solar system and beyond. I greet you, my dear beloved sisters, on this wonderful day, which is dedicated to Mother, but it is more than Mother's Day. Would you agree? <laughs> And we thank Allah for his coming in the person of a well-made man. Not a spook, not an invisible, right. otherwise we would be spooks right. <laughs> and we would be invisible. And so we're working with the laws of physics, which makes manifest from invisible to visible. So there was a time when we were invisible, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. And we thank Allah for his coming in the person of Master Farrar Muhammad, the great Mahdi, God in person. We thank him for raising in our midst from the mud of civilization one like us to guide, to teach, and to bring us from this old world into an entire new world system and order of God. The honorable Elijah Muhammad, the exalted Christ, the Messiah. To know that we can stand here today and honor the honorable Elijah Muhammad as the living Christ, yes. Yes. the one that the whole world has been looking for. Yes. <laughs> that he was born in a black manger, yes. surrounded by beasts and animals in this Western Hemisphere to know that we are the people who are able to witness to the world that he's not over there in Palestine, <laughs> he's not over there in Central Asia, he's not over there in Europe, he's not even down there in Argentina, he's not in the islands of the Pacific, he's not in the Caribbean. But yet, he is in all those places all at once. Yes. But we are the little people, the little baby born out of slavery That's right. that the world did not expect That's right. that such a one would be born among us, even though they read the scripture Come on. and they see the humbleness out of which Jesus came forth 2,000 years ago. And I'll talk about that a little bit later. But just imagine how happy we should be yes. today and every day that we can witness to the world. Now we have to go beyond witnessing. We have to come forth with the proof, the scientific evidence that he is the Christ, that he is the Messiah, that he is the one that the entire world of mankind has been looking for coming up among ex-slaves, people who were considered to be no people at all. And we thank him for his prayer that one would be left in the classroom, that would be guided by his spirit, by his light, by his divine word, to continue to take us on this rugged path as we reach out to the other side of an entire new world order. And that one, as we know, is his very special helper and spokesman, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. I spent this time to describe the essence of who these great, great men, holy men are. Yes, so that we will honor and respect the divine teachings out of which we are being born today. So I greet you in the greetings of peace and paradise. Assalamu alaikum. It doesn't matter if you came here today as a Christian or if you came here today as a Jew 
or if you came here today as a Buddhist, or if you came here today as a Hindu, or if you came here today as a Muslim. When all is said and done, it is your works which glorify you, not your name. That's right. So if we're doing nothing, I will recall these words, the latest words I heard from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, we are going flatline. Okay? There's a monitor monitoring our heartbeat, monitoring our motion in the medical field. And on that screen, as you know, if you have life, it goes up and down, right? There's a little current, current of electricity that lets us know that we're still here, we're still thriving, but once that thing goes straight, it's like ground zero. And you're not here anymore. The majority of the religious uh, theologies, preachers, people who claim to know their religion, they are not satisfied with the life we have been given by God, nor grateful for the life we have been given God. Therefore, they create a, a very sophisticated system to make you think that you're gonna go somewhere after you die. Come on, come on. Is that right? Go up to heaven and all the angels and the archangels will be there and they'll open the door and you'll walk gracefully through and you'll be billowing on clouds and you'll be taken into cloud nine that doesn't exist, you know? And if you got out there stuck in cold, dark space, you would be absolutely eaten up by the elements itself and you can't come back because I think you would be, again, flatline. <laughs> so all of our hopes, all of our aspiration, and I know that there is an existence immediately after we die. And there is some kind of consciousness. This must be studied scientifically. When my son, Ishmael Muhammad, who was this minister Farrakhan at Mos Miriam, when he was a young boy about eight years old, he went to his father in Chicago, in the present residence of the Honorable uh, Minister Farrakhan and his family, the National House, the palace. He went up to him after dinner and he asked him this question. He said, I want to know just what exactly happens to a person when they're dead, when they're pronounced dead. And it was the first time I had ever heard him say this to anyone, nor in a public venue or in a private setting. But my son asked him that question, and this was the answer that I can remember. God guide me to say the words correctly. He said, if a person lives a righteous life and is a good person, that if Allah can get to that person, that body, within 24, 36 hours, he can bring that person back to life. That he can be revived. And I wondered, ever since my son told me that answer, and I never was able to get back to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad at that time, because that was around 1974, within a year of his actual departure. So then I realized, oh, it took me 20, 25, 30 years scratching my head. What was he saying? And then I finally came to what I believe is a reasonable conclusion. He was literally telling my son what was going to happen to him upon his departure. That when he was pronounced dead and the world said, we got a birth certificate, there it is, he died in Mercy Hospital in Chicago, Illinois from congestive heart failure. So that means he was flatlining, right? But if, he said, God gets to that person, the body, within 24 or 36 hours, he can revive that person and bring them back to life. He was talking about himself and the high science that is involved when you're working with the man who you've identified as God, nothing is impossible. Is that right? That may not be for everybody. Because if you are on a certain level of consciousness while you live, 
you may be able to pass through levels or grades or dimensions where you still maintain consciousness because he also taught us that thought, whatever you think, whatever your thoughts are, never die. Now that's interesting. So where does the thought go, one might ask. How do you retrieve that thought or what does that mean? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad was a scientist of God in the making in our midst. So his teachings was beyond the physical plane of this world. It was beyond the theological period that we're in. He was beyond the political systems that dictate policies that bring us into war and near nuclear devastation and disasters. He was preparing a small group of people while he was here to be able to receive in their mind and their thinking the thinking of God. And once you can get into that area of the thinking of God, then you become co-creators with the universe. This is science. This is true science. Everything we see today happening in the world, dear brothers and sisters, comes from the manifestation of the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. He is the one that told us for decades and decades getting this teaching from his master teacher who he identified to the public as being the one that the world had been looking for. Not knowing that ultimately he would take on the presence, person, spirit of that very same one that he was identifying that he would become so close to that one it would be like two arrows shot from the same bow. And so they never miss. So gradually the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is coming into that scientific knowledge of what all these scriptures are talking about and getting past the illusion and getting into the scientific analysis of the divine teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I did not expect that I would go this way, but apparently there's a lot of people out there thinking something yeah. on this subject. <laughs> We claim to be Muslims. Notice what I said. We claim, but we're using baby language to describe our existence. We say that we're under the Islamic faith, but we don't understand the true meaning of Islam. We don't understand the true meaning of what it means to be a Muslim. Some of us are calling ourselves Christians, and we don't understand the true meaning of why we are called Christians. We can call ourselves any other religious school of thought, but we're not really clear, am I right? You know what a clear is, right? <laughs> we're not real clear till we go dive deep into the wellspring of self. And don't make life so complicated, make it real. Whatever is disturbing you, or me, and me, all of us together, it is the outcome of having been under the domination and the rule of our former slave masters. That is not being a racist. That's identifying the problem psychologically of why we're so damaged and why we can't seem to move beyond the straight line. Okay? All right, to come back to ourselves again is the basis of what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches. This teaching is to bring about not the old world. You don't want to get trapped in the old world. You don't want to be a Catholic. You don't want to be involved in the Vatican and their decisions or the College of Cardinals and all of the false teaching, but yet in secret they have the Black Virgins that they pull out every year, right? Because they want to keep going and so they have to cling to the Black. Oops as the magic, black magic they call it, right? To survive. And then you've got the secrets of Fatima, right? And that was in Portugal, Fatima. But Fatima, which is interesting, that particular part of Portugal was called Fatima where these three girls purportedly saw the vision of Mary, right? And when they got these secrets, they were told that they could only tell them gradually. So two of the sisters passed away, and the one that remains 
continues to unfold what is said to be a secret. But it's so secretive that the Vatican and the popes for all these years have refrained from touching on that secret, what that secret is. Fatima in Islam is the daughter, a very famous daughter of Prophet Muhammad that lived 1400 years ago. Now, how is it that this little city in Portugal called Fatima turns out to present a secret revelation uh, that cannot be told to the entire world, but that city is called Fatima, so it's called the vision of Fatima. Then you go to Mexico and you have another apparition of the appearance of what they say is the Mother Mary, okay, uh, and it was impressed on a shroud and they have the black version in Mexico City, Guadalupe, okay? So all of these sacred people have to go back to seeing revelations or seeing apparitions that connect to black people. When you trace the origin of Chinese history, they boast, our history goes back 5,000 years. 5,000 years? Ah, that's like drinking kids milk or something, you know? 5,000, wow, okay. Then you go to the Vedas and the Hindus, and they say they came from the Brahmas and da 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 da, da highly civilized. They came from Aryans, Caucasians that invaded India. And they put to death the original black population in India, the Dravidians, right? So they're like the forgotten people. Now they're the people that clean your toilets over in India, and they're the people that sweep the streets in India. And it is said, according to that caste system, that you cannot go into any other stage or class of people. You're always going to be on that level. And you are the forgotten people. That happened to black people all over the planet. So everywhere you go, it is our home. And we have given our home over to all of the other races and all of the other people to show us what was in the black man's brown germ. So these are all races, and there should be no racism. There should be historical, scientific explanation, genetic coding, the DNA, and we can prove that the first parents, according to the geneticists right now, and the genome map, where they come from? Africa. But Africa wasn't called Africa then. They were given the power to be able to rename and name all of these continents according to their plan of execution. So Africanus, or Africa, Africanus, who was he? Come on now. Okay? So when you look at the geographical composition of our planet, it was not this way even 10,000 years ago. And then you can go back and back and back, and now the scientists are saying, oh, yes, it was called Pangea. Pangea? What's that? Pangea. Punch of some sort, right? So I said, or is it Peter Pan? Pan? Oh, OK. <laughs> I'm sorry, brothers and sisters. This, hey, this is our day. This is for the women. <laughs> When we open up our mouths to speak, we must clarify why the nation, why black people in particular, why we're flatlining. Take a look, take a look how they treat their women. Come on now. Okay? So we don't have an affiliation for those of you who are visiting us for the first time. We don't have an investment in this world. Our investment is building a new world of our own, and setting the record straight, bringing the full-blown truth to the world, not as a racist, but as a scientist, and as a god in the making. That's who you are, brothers and sisters. We are one complete family. So again, let's look at this mother. Is this Mother's Day just today? All right. Every day is what? Mother's Day. Mother's Day. Every day is Savior's Day, right? 
go back to the theme, 2011, Savior's Day this year, was the scientific analysis of the divine teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. When we go back to those oh, mysterious hidden documents that they found in Detroit, Michigan, are you familiar with that? Yes. And the news that reported the finding of these documents and the shock of the hour then, as is the shock of the hour today, is that they didn't have any idea how important role the woman played. But there was a woman whom I had met, and she no longer is with us, bless her heart, is Sister Bernstein Mohammed. This is another great woman. She was the first secretary to write the secret order, if we want to say, of the New World Order. She was the one who received the, what we call the lessons and had to have them typed out and put into the forms that we receive today. So if we stay on the surface of our teaching, this is what is meant by flatlining. We have to go back to the beginning, not just the beginning of how we came to birth, but he came, that great master, Master Farad Muhammad, came to bring us back into the knowledge of where we originated in the vast creation of the universe. And the women, the women play the most important part. In that stage of the universe, it was called a womb. And men don't have wombs yet. <laughs> okay. But the woman has the womb. And so when God was self-creating himself with the elements in the darkness, the atoms, the molecules, all of the things that are naturally created in space, or self-created in space, it was himself drawing these elements together to create and fashion the first human being who is the god of the universe. We were there in the consciousness of the thinking of God when he was making himself up. So when he said he came out of that dark womb, everything he looked around him, he called it she. The planets are called she. The earth, mother earth, that we trample on every day. So therefore, in this period of time, we're having catastrophic disasters because Mother Earth says this is enough. The mothers all over the world are saying we're not going to take it anymore. Is that right? We do not have to walk around like in a veil. Okay? We do not have to ride around and can't drive a car when an emergency comes. We cannot be chattel slaves for the men. We cannot come up without education. We cannot be subjected. So we are not of the old world order of Islam. The old world order of Islam is following, following a traditional cultural trend that we're not a part of. We are our own unique being, our own unique thought produced us from God. So when we leave here today, I want us to see Mother's Day as a rebaptism, if I can put it that way, into the original waters of the abyss, of the, of the heavens and the earth, and know that you don't just have a short history that says black history. We never walk around and say yellow history. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's really, I mean, and if you say yellow history, people will say, what are you talking about? Oh, we're talking about China history? Oh, okay, Yangtze River? And then when you go back there to their origins, they've forgotten the link from being the Chinese people from the original black tribes that lived along the Yangtze River. Did you know that? And, and I Ching, or I Ching, and the beginning of the metaphysical world and the counting of system, of this I Ching system was brought from our foreparents because we traveled all around the world, but we were not just, I'm a nation from Africa. That's right. Come on. And so the enemy knows that as long as we identify ourselves yes. as just being from one continent, yes. then we're not understanding our universal yes. origins yes. and that we are responsible for laying the foundation of civilizations in China, Japan, Oceania, the Pacific, 
So everybody gets stuck on their ethnicity, right? Oh, I'm from China, I'm from Polynesia, I'm from this place and that place. And then all of these are like tribes and clans that try to show that they are better than another one. Is that right? Of, of, the, of those groupings of people. But when we go back to our origins, when you go back to the indigenous origins, where do they say they came from? <laughs> sort of, sort of. <laughs> they came from mom, yeah. But they say that their origin is in the stars. That's what we're finding. And then what are the scientists saying? Every element that makes up our DNA, our body, came from a nova explosion of the stars. That as the stars exploded, into space, then those elements became the molecules, become the chromosomes that make up our blood, that make up our bones, that make up our brains, everything. So we are walking around with the cosmic stars material. The ancients knew this, so therefore they preserved it like in ceremonies, traditions, where you can go, for example, to Africa, being foremost in my mind right this minute, but you can go any place and you, their history will all be the same. We came from the stars. When you go to Africa, you can go to Egypt. All of their bu buildings, their temples, their monuments, the Great Pyramid, all of them were aligned in connection to a star system or a particular star. Is that right? That's what they're finding. If you go to Mexico, the same thing. All their pyramids, their monuments, their, everything was aligned to star systems. And the most common ones that are cited is the Sirius star system, yes, uh, the Pleiades, uh, the Seven Sisters, right, uh, Orion Belt, these are the most common. And they found now, with this archaeoastronomy field that opened up in 1975, actually originated here in Los Angeles at the pl uh, planetarium you have here, I've forgotten the name of it, but what is your planetarium? Griffith Park. It was, yeah, he was the director of the Pantera, and he began to give these lectures of, hey, wait a minute, we're missing something. We gotta go back to our, the ancient people. How, how did they build these monuments? And that's when they started seeing, oh wow, what an error our foolish forefathers did, the Europeans, because when they came out of Europe, came over to the West or wherever they went, they destroyed documents, monuments, science, astronomy, mathematics. Now they're trying to say, oh my God, now we got to recollect all this material. Those ancient people knew something. And now they're bringing it back into the public interest and into the public study. As I come to a close, I promise not to be too long. I, 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 I almost promise. Remember what I said earlier? That the reason we're flatlining all over the world, and I ask the question, how do we treat our women? Are they vassals? Are they part of a corrupt system that has ruled at least 6,000 years? Because when you go beyond 6,000 years, women were really queens. The queens, the women, were oracles of their nations, right? The men would gather around the women, aha, uh -huh, to see into the future. And the, the uh, Oracle of Delphi, for example, before Alexander the Great and any of these great warriors, they would consult with the oracles. And even in society today, if you go back beyond 6,000, it was not patriarchal. It was matriarchal or matrilineal. And that you would count, for example, in uh, African or Egyptian society, it was de determined by the woman, the mother's side to know who would be the one who would come into power or who would be raised. Therefore, women had to partake of the secrets of God. So you had Osiris, not by himself. You have Osiris and Isis. And you had Isis maintaining the secrets or holding on to the secrets, right, that are still not clearly defined in the Egyptian uh, society today. But we do know that the Romans, the Greeks, all of these early formulative European cultures and civilizations 
were originally based upon the knowledge and wisdom that they got from our four parents living in Egypt, right? Pythagoras and the music and physics. All of that came from them sitting under our priestly fathers there in uh, Egypt who told them about many ancient civilizations that had come before. And one of them in particular, which was passed down by Plato in some of his uh, Greek writings, is that the Greeks, he said, you all are but children. The earth has switched um, axes, has turned different ways for uh, thousands and thousands of years. And then they spoke about these legendary old cultures that we may read about called Atlantis or Lemuria, Mu, and disappearing continents that went below the seas, which now their scientists are finding evidence. Oh my gosh, it's real. Okay. <laughs> and we didn't have anything to do with it. <laughs> so they are measuring how long can they keep their foot on us, that we don't wake up, that we don't become conscious. Are we able to take them down with us since we know we're going? So as long as they can keep us dumb and, and fixed in the box, in their bag, in their way of thinking, and don't jump out the box, you know, and create our own world, bring back our own visions, we do not have to be dependent upon their systems. What is preventing us from coming together? The lack of love of ourselves? that we think, okay, uh, all right, the Indian culture has that wisdom, but the ancient Indian culture also derived their teachings from original black people. They have a teaching that there is a mystical black uh, giant uh, out there somewhere in space. <laughs> We're the invisible black giant. <laughs> so as we look, brothers and sisters, with the unfolding crises facing our planet and paying strict attention to the guidelines that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is giving us. We are in the zone of disaster right now, not just California, but where these fault lines are all up and down, Cascadia, over into Seattle, Washington, and Oregon, and the scientists are warning, oops, we're coming up to that almost like 300 year cycle where these big tsunamis and earthquakes opened up. And it is believed that in Japan, the terrible catastrophe you know, that hit, him, hit them was in that 300 year mark. So now they're saying the big other fault line that is very vulnerable and very dangerous is the one that we're sitting on. But it's not just Los Angeles, it's to the north, yeah, there are also fault lines running through the Mississippi, which is in floods right now, flooding. Tennessee's in trouble. They said unprecedented rivers and flooding is rising. And what does that mean? Just before Atlantis um, sunk, before the destruction of Atlantis, it was something similar. They had high rises or a drops in their coastal areas and the waters were beginning to concave or come in, flooding, etc. So we can get signs from reading the old histories that point to what we are in the middle of today. Believe it or not, the nation of Islam in America holds the key to the saving of all Americans. So how they treat us, okay, is their salvation. There are few in the government, in the Congress, in the Senate, including up to the executive office and the, her, his cabinet, that know these things. But their whole plot is to keep us dumb to that knowledge so that whatever they plan on this planet with their nuclear weapons is not going to work for them because we have another powerful physical evidence of the great wheels, which they call unidentified flying objects. And they are monitoring closer and closer all of the military uh, areas that are experimenting on high explosions and greater weapons down up under the 
waters they have bases and they have connecting bases in, in the air. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us the sophistication of that mother's wheel not only was built to destroy when the time comes, and he said that that wheel will go into action and all those planes, depending upon the treatment to you and I, can you believe that? If they come after us and start grabbing us, he said we may lose maybe up to 300, but he said after that, those saving angels will drop down in those little planes and it's not with wings. Not those kind of wings. They're gonna come down, okay? And they will be delivering people. Some of them will be taken up in these crafts. And you read that in the Bible called the rapture, right? That the Christ would be taken, the Messiah would be taken, and along with him, at least 144,000 that would be taken up and taken to a safety zone to a place that's outside of the destructive zone. Mm. And it's not that they are forcing their high technology on this world, but this world being so vanglorious and, and proud and thinking they have the best and trying mm. to keep other nations, now they are the object of scrutiny, observation, and yes, contacts. Mm. And the American government knows this, NASA knows this, the Goddard Space Program knows this, but they want to keep it classified uh, under secrecy, top secrecy. But the Honorable Minister Farrakhan blew open that, that trap and he gave a whole symposium. It lasted some three to four hours with scientists who were proving the evidence that UFOs are real. So as I come to a conclusion, I want to leave with you some parting words that has to do with the significance of the number 19. It's been a long time since I have actually spoken on this subject because it's all tied up in the judgment too. When people make mockery, um, of this number, they're not aware of the seriousness of what they're doing. You cannot mishandle that significant number that is in the Quran. I have taught in previous years a great deal more than I'm able to teach now, but it was a scholar and associate of mine, Dr. Rashad Khalifa, who through computerized uh, studies put the Quran into the system and found out that every letter, every number, every verse, every chapter, even punctuation marks, are all multiples of the number 19, and thus the number 19 is the signature of God upon all life on this planet and in the universe to come. So if you utilize the number 19 in whatever manner, you have to be clear that you're not stepping on the significance of the spiritual teaching that we have from this particular number. It is okay to study the number 19, of course, and then have our own scientists studying the number 19, but if you get to the point where you think that you can just use that number in a careless way for marketing or manufacturing, I think you're stepping into a position where you, somebody has to say, checkmate. No. Now I'm going to read, as I close, this wonderful afternoon. Everyone still smiling? Yeah. <laughs> the Honorable Minister Farrakhan has written about the number 19 in a very beautiful way in the study guides, I think 18 and maybe some other study guides, in which, in which he mentions that there is a surah in the Holy Quran directing this particularly to women that is called uh, Maryam. And it is the only surah, of course, that carries the number 19. But why is her history recited? in that particular surah. 
How sacred is the woman? How sacred is our relationship to God? If the women do not stand up to the challenge of being mocked and of being abused, and let our brothers and men know that we are the mothers of God, yes. not just your mother, but we produce the long line from the beginning of the creation. And that if you think that you can do things and not consult with your mothers, you're leaving yourself and your nation into hell. From Surah 74. It's called the one wrapping himself up, meaning that it is all about God. It is all about divine and how you reflect that divinity in what you do on an everyday basis is part of the test and the trial that we're going through with Almighty God Allah. I'm sure that you are, many of you may be familiar that we opened a manufacturing um, dress that's called what? 19. The dress 19. Right. Okay. Do I own the number 19? No. no. I tell you clearly where the origin of that number 19 comes from. According to what I received from the scholarly work of Dr. Rashad Khalifa and his response when he met me at the turn of the 15th century of the Hijra in 1980 in Tucson, Arizona. He asked me, what do I think that this number 19 means? And I said, well, Mr. Uh, Rashad, Dr. Rashad, I said, I really don't know. This is the first time that I've come into this knowledge. I said, but leave me to study. And let me see what Allah will reveal to me. That's what I said to him. I said, right now, I can only say that at the end of 19 is the number 20. <laughs> So um, anyway, but it turned out in my later studies that it is the calculation of the ancient Mayas and Indian civilizations of Mesoamerica in particular that uses those numbers, zero to 19, for all of their measurements of the cycles that we're in. So when you see or hear about the close of this present world cycle, according to the prophecies of the Maya calendar, they use these numbers, 0 to 19, to figure the exact end or closing of that particular, particular cycle, which goes to 2012, the beginning of 2013. And so Allah is the great arranger of all things. And I never knew that I was going to meet uh, the gentleman, Jose Arguelles. May Allah bless his soul because he is no longer uh, with us. But he too work closely with Mother Panetta here in understanding what the significance were, was of those numbers. I have to tell it to you because it's Mother's Day, right? right. Get it out. <laughs> it was through the divine teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad that I was able to speak with him and his wife in the formulative years of his studies on the Maya calendar and introduced him to the Holy Quran and they began to do the prayer service in Islam, and they began to also use the teaching of Islam and the Holy Quran and the number 19 with all of those who were studying the Maya calendar. So here's what we're talking about, the scientific investigation. We take the teachings, and then wherever you see the link, the chain, it leads us to the universal expression of the teachings where the minds are the people who are studying mathematics, science, astronomy, physics, etc. And our teachings are the keys that help them to receive more light. But we have to know how to use it, how to apply it, what is the best manner, and we can't just rush out there, you understand? Right. And make a very serious error and mistake. Um, I am oft times looked upon as just being, you know, a, a non-official, and I'm not. 
<laughs> I'm not that kind of official. I, I never have yearned for that kind of position. I've never vied in competition with anybody for any place. I don't go around the nation trying to make myself big. And I don't do speaking engagements at colleges and circuits and go all around, you know, around and around and around I go. And uh, because my work is intimately involved with my husband. Yes. And what he <laughs> guides. I can reveal a little bit more, yes, a little bit more how he guides me because I don't want the people to make a mistake and misjudge me and then make mockery of me, but they're not understanding who is behind me. Okay? So as I close, dear Ooh. sisters, you're so beautiful. You too, my dear. Brothers, I, I can't, I, oh, I see the brothers are making a ring of fire, right? Ah, ah, <laughs> thank you, brother. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Please, brothers, honor our women. Honor the beauty that they represent as the birthing for all of you and more to come in the future. As the Honorable Minister Farrakhan said, we are the ones that give birth to the gods. He didn't say just give birth to a baby. He said giving birth to a god. So what kind of woman is this that can give birth to a god? She's got to be kind of like up in there too, right? She has, to, she has to be in the consciousness of divine, the consciousness of God. So the more we take care of our women, the more that we make a life easier for them, the more beautiful they will become like budding flowers, gemstones, okay? That you can be so proud of and so happy that you can acknowledge the black woman, that she is the goddess, that she is with God, is co-creator. As I close, I know I've said that 19 times, <laughs> but this is what happens when we play with divine. We're playing, as the Savior said it, as the Honorable Elijah Han said, playing with a hot fire, and a hot fire at that. Now, the woman, the woman, why is she so important? And why is she so important to the rise of our nation? Because we say it over and over, a nation can rise no higher than its women. Well, what are we talking about? Heaven lies at the feet of women. That's another saying from Islam, right? Yes. So if all of that is just a bunch of hash hash, I don't talk about that other hash. But, you know, just a lot of garble, 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 Google, Google, whatever. You know, talk, talk, yeah, my woman is fine, yeah, she's my queen, uh, I put her on a pedestal, you know, oh, no. See, we, we, we got to know what the woman is, and you have a real woman here, and if you love her and treat her right, God is going to put a crown on your head. So don't be like those who didn't understand this number 19, that the woman is wrapped up in that number 19. We are the modern Mary. We are those virgins that are being honored and celebrated by the Catholic world, the Christian world all over. We are the ones that are that virgin soil that God is going to use to mix a new DNA and change the cellular because her mind has to be protected and her mind must connect directly with God, not with any other person. 
When you connect to God, then you can be bold with it. That's right. Because yes, God inspired you. Yes, you had a vision. Right. Yes, you had That's a dream. Right, yes, we have to learn how to speak to the people and they will back up. That's right. But if you say, well, I, I know that this is the way you're supposed to teach. Treat me, you know, I, I am the queen after all. I'll oh, shut up, woman. <laughs> then what do you do? Say, shut, back, shut up, man, and hit him? You go to your source. That's right. And you pray for damnation and hell on those people that are keep disrespecting us. I can't say Allah says in the Holy Quran as I close. Oy. He starts beating up all of these kind of ideas that are in the heads of what they call the disbelievers. And he says, leave me alone with him whom I created. And I gave him riches and sons dwelling in his presence and made matters easy for him and yet he desires that I should give more that's something by no means surely he is inimical to our messages meaning negating rejecting our messages I will make a distressing punishment overtake him surely he reflected and determined now listen to this but maybe he desired, he just, well, I'm sorry, I can't see too well. But may he be destroyed how he determined. Again, may he, now notice he's talking to a he. Yes, Come on. See, All right, this is the mentality of the present world that gets confused with their divinity and business and their operations of subtleties. Allah has got his eye on all of us, but particularly the male is being addressed. Again, may he be destroyed, how he determined. Then he looked, then look what he said, then frowned and scowled at good advice from the God now. Then turned back and was big with pride. And then said, this is not but magic from of old. This is not but the word of a mortal. I will cast him into hell. And what will make thee realize what hell is? It leaves not and spares not. Now, are you ready? It scorches the mortal. And then over it, this hell, that we have made by not thinking properly, correctly, not being on the course of divine, but pretending that you mean good. But you don't listen to your mothers. You don't listen to your wives who are trying to say you must be one with God. Let us take counsel together. Let us create, oh, all right, a world and a family of beauty and love. Okay, don't take advantage of one another. Don't disrespect That's right. one another. That's all it's saying. That's right. Let the woman breathe. That's right. yeah. Let the woman share. Come on. Right. Yeah. Let the woman be kind and generous to you, but she can't be kind and generous if you keep with your fist in her mouth. That's right. That's right. Come on. Come on. Or knocking her down every time she tries to say something of beauty. Yeah. Right? That's, right? That's what we were made for. We're to compliment the men. And they will be proud and vainglorious and scrowl and all of that for the good advice that they rejected their mothers, then they reject their wives, then they're scheming, and then they're trying to use her for some other reason other than for her reality of beauty that she represents the goddess of the universe. And then it says, it scorches the mortal. Over it, this hell, listen to us, are 19. That's, Surah, uh, that's verse 30. And who came in 1930? So the 
Quran is fixed so that when you see the number 30 in the verse, yeah. prefix it by 19, yeah. you get a chronology of the origin of our history yeah. in America and the coming yeah. of God himself. Yeah. And we have made, are you ready? None but angels, wardens of the fire. And we have not made their number but as a trial for those who have been given the book. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, for those who disbelieve. See what I'm saying? So you play with fire and you will get fire. But you don't think that the women are strong enough to represent God in their person. So but when she then says to you, I am part of that number. Read Surah 19. Yeah. I'm talking to all of us. Yeah. The Honorable Minister is the one who put that in his study guide. Yeah. The importance of the woman and the giving birth to a God and the number meaning of the number 19. True? Yeah. But we take it for granted. And we turn back because he's saying respect our women. Treat her as you would treat yourselves. So we say, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. A little bit obstinate. You know, go walk on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Sure, sure, sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then finally it goes on to say that those who have been given the book may be certain and those who believe may increase in faith. And those who have been given the book and the believers may not doubt and that those in whose hearts is a disease and our disbelievers may say, and look at this, look at this arrogance. What does Allah, questioning Allah, what does Allah mean by this parable? And this parable is the number 19. So if we are clothed in righteousness, okay, and we are clothed as the model for a new world order, then we are mathematically and scientifically, okay, lined up with the thinking of God. And this will automatically begin to change the cellular formation in our body. So when we have child, that thought and that thinking is going into the womb and into the child. So when he is born, he will be born a master, a scientist, a God. But we, the women, have to be aligned, you understand? scientifically, yes. mathematically, with the oneness of God and have His signature in our heart. Yes. His signature in our heart and soul and mind. Okay. Thus, Allah leaves in error, listen to this, whom He pleases and guides whom He pleases and none knows the hosts of thy Lord but He. And this is not but a reminder to mortals. May I say these closing words to our children, to our youth, to those who believe that they're in a gang, to those who are on drugs. You need motherly attention. You need to come back home. You need to be with your families. Because this is nothing but the trick of the devil that is trying to get rid of this rich generation to bring them into the bottomless pit with them. Put away those guns. I almost, in my heart, I cry every time. I think about the young people and their potential for greatness. And I think about huh, Wanting to stir up a caravan, I once said this to Sister Gladys years ago. I said, we should have a caravan of mothers that start canvassing our neighborhood. Wear our white. Be the mothers, be the angels of light. Okay? And start talking to our youth. Remember, Allah is the power. Doesn't matter if they have, what do they call it, K-47s? Yeah. And we just stand there and say, ah. And they'll say, what? what is this? Going up and down the neighborhood. 
giving them advice on better food, giving them the hoopology, <laughs> hoop gardening, <laughs> and let them know we love them so much that it pains us to see them in this condition and if nobody else will go out there and if the police are crooked and all of the rest of the society and the cities are crooked, what you gonna do when a big black mama comes out there? <laughs>
Mother Tynetta. That was magnificent. Thank you so much. And you can get Mother Tynetta's DVDs. We will be selling them in the back. These are a must. The Tenth System, The Brain, and the Final Call Symphonic Suite by Mother Tynetta Muhammad, Friday, February 27, 2009. Okay. Okay. Yes, ma'am. We have to take orders for these because they're in Chicago. We do have these here. Ten dollars. Okay, so we'll take orders for these. We have these here. Invaluable. Okay, so all praises due to Allah. We have a special presentation this afternoon. And we would like to say that Compton also has a spe special presentation for your mother. So if you'd like to have somewhere to go this afternoon, take your moms to Compton, Moss number 54, 799 North Long Beach Boulevard, and honor your mother. It only costs $15. And Sister Gilda has done a wonderful, wonderful job with decoration. She has done a wonderful job. So instead of going to the Cheesecake Factory, let's honor our own and let's go to Compton number 54. This is our Western Regional Student Protocol Director, Sister Rosetta Muhammad, and she will be instrumental in sharing with you our presentation for today.